In this video, I'll go over the finite difference method for nonlinear ODEs. After studying this video, you should be able to implement the finite difference method for a nonlinear boundary value problem and use Newton Raphson iteration to solve the resulting system of nonlinear algebraic equations. First, let's review the process for the finite difference method. Again, this is an application of tools that we already have from earlier in the class. We're going to divide the solution into discrete steps over the domain, separated by a distance delta x. At each of those steps, we'll solve for the value of the solution by writing the differential equation using finite difference formulas for the derivatives. Finally, we'll, we will apply the boundary conditions and simplify the system of algebraic equations. We saw in a previous video that for linear ODEs, the resulting system is linear, and we can use any of our methods for linear systems to solve it, such as left, divi left division. For nonlinear ODEs, the resulting system of algebraic equations is nonlinear, and so we will use Newton Raphson iteration in this example to solve it. So let's look at how we do this with an example. So here we'll solve the same problem that we looked at with the nonlinear shooting method for the temperature distribution in a heated rod. So again, we will start by substituting finite difference formulas for the derivatives in our differential equation. So we have the one derivative here, the second derivative of t with respect to x. So substituting in a second order finite difference approximation for that second derivative, we get t i plus 1 minus 2 t i plus t i plus 1 all over delta x squared and plus h prime times t infinity minus t i plus sigma prime times t infinity to the fourth minus t to the fourth is all equal to zero. So that is now our algebraic equation for the ith node in our discrete system. And again, it's nonlinear because we have a t to the fourth there. So the next step, we'll multiply through by delta x squared and collect like terms and we get t i minus 1 minus 2 plus delta x squared times h prime all of that times t i minus delta x squared times sigma prime times t i to the fourth plus t i plus 1 plus delta x squared times h prime t infinity plus sigma prime t infinity to the fourth. And all of that is equal to 0. So just to simplify our algebra a little bit, I'm going to recognize that this whole term right here is all constants from the parameters in the problem, and I'm going to replace that with a constant c. And then we have our ith, our nonlinear equation set up for the ith node corresponding to ti. So what we need to do next is set this up for a newton raphson iteration, since this is a nonlinear equation. We want to write first our system of nonlinear equations. And it's already set equal to zero, so that step for formulating Newton Raphson's method is complete. But we do need to apply our boundary conditions for the first and last node. So applying our boundary conditions, we can write for node one, we'll have negative two 
plus delta x squared h prime all times t1 minus delta x squared times sigma prime times t1 to the fourth plus t2 plus, now we have our c, and actually I'm going to make that c not include the delta x squared term. So the C will just include the H prime T infinity plus sigma prime T infinity squared. So this would be C times delta X squared. That way it, it leaves it easier to change the X spacing. And then plus our boundary condition plus T naught. And that's our boundary condition 300 Kelvin. And we'll call that F1. So that's our equation for the first internal node. Then for our ith node, fi, our function for the newton raphson iteration, will be just as we have ti minus 1 minus 2 plus delta x squared h prime times ti minus delta x squared sigma prime times ti to the fourth plus ti plus 1 plus c times delta x squared. Again, both of these are equal to zero. And again, that is our boundary condition, first boundary condition. The last case we have is for the nth internal node, the last internal node, and so that will be tn minus 1 minus 2 plus delta x squared h prime times tn minus delta x squared sigma prime times t n to the fourth plus c delta x squared plus t n equals zero. There's our second boundary condition. I'm sorry, I should call that t l. So that again, our first one was 300 Kelvin. Our second one is 400 Kelvin. So again, the F1 and Fn are just the instances at the first and last internal node. For F1, we didn't have a Ti minus 1 because that was our boundary condition, T0. For Fn, we didn't have a Ti plus 1 because that's our boundary condition, Tl. So now, if you recall the next step, for newton raphson iteration is to go through and take those partial derivatives and the three partial derivatives we need to take to set up the Jacobian matrix we're going to need to take df sub i with respect to dt if we look at any f sub i it has a ti minus one a ti and a ti plus 1. So we're going to need to take the partial derivative with respect to each of those. So we have dfi dt i. We have dfi dt i minus 1. And we have dfi dt i plus 1. So let's look at taking those partial derivatives of our general fi function. So for our df dti, we're going to have the ti minus 1 term goes away, and we're basically going to have negative 2 plus delta x squared times h prime times the ti, and that would then go away with taking the derivative, minus 4 delta x squared sigma prime times ti cubed. So that's taking the derivative of that ti to the fourth term. That's where that 4 comes from, so 4 ti cubed. And the ti plus 1 term goes away and the other term goes away because those are constants with respect to taking that derivative 
for the ith node. df dt i minus 1, looking at our equation here, for dt i minus 1, we see we've only got the one term. Every, t i minus 1 isn't in any of the rest of the terms. So df i dt i minus 1 is just equal to 1. And similarly, df dt i plus 1 is just equal to 1. Again, looking back here, we only have the ti plus 1 term with a coefficient of 1, and the deriv partial derivative of the rest with respect to ti plus 1 is going to be 0. So those are our three derivative terms, and plugging them into the Jacobian matrix, we get the following. So here's our Along the diagonal, we basically have our df sub i dt i, and then we have the ones for the derivatives with respect to t i plus 1 and t i minus 1, respectively, on those two diagonals. So, similar to the finite difference method for linear problems, the finite difference method for nonlinear problems requires quite a bit of work up front by hand working out the Jacobian matrix and simplifying our algebraic equations to get something like these three equations that we can then use to implement Newton wraps and iteration. So we have our three we have our functions, our system of equations for Newton wraps and iteration. We also have our Jacobian matrix here for Newton wraps and iteration and we're ready to go to MATLAB and we'll use nrsys.m from earlier in the quarter. So let's look at the MATLAB code to solve this system using Newton wraps and iteration. So we have our parameters at the top here and I've set this up to solve with 21 nodes our boundary conditions are 300 and 400. And for the initial guesses, and this is one tricky thing, recall from Newton Raps and Iteration earlier in the quarter that if your initial guesses are too far off, the method might not converge. So this can be a tricky part for nonlinear boundary problems, boundary value problems. In this case, what we're going to do is just assume a linear distribution. So to set up our initial guesses, we'll basically assume that we have that temperature going from 300 to 400, and for our initial guesses, we'll just assume it varies linearly. We know that's not the final result, but that's just for the initial guesses for newton Rapson. So we set up that linear distribution pretty easily, just using Lin space going from 300 to 400. Then we'll pull the internal nodes out of that, so the second through the n minus 1 nodes, and send those as our initial guesses to Newton Rapson. And I'm using the default ES default maximum iterations and then the rest of these parameters we're sending through Verar again to use in evaluating both our functions which I put in an external file because it was fairly complicated and our Jacobian matrix for that function. So again recall for nrsys this returns a column vector of function evaluations and the second input returns the Jacobian matrix evaluated at the current value of t or x the variable that we're solving for. Lastly we'll add our t values as we'll add the boundary conditions 
onto the t values and plot the result. So let's look at those two functions, temp function and temp Jacobian, and see what they look like. So temp function, and again, keeping since we're using var r again, the first argument, that's our current guess from newton rapson for t of x. It's a vector of t values at all of our discrete x points, and it's from nr cis. Then the rest of these are just being passed through, again, with a var arg n. So we'll set up our grid again here. Here we still use that same constant c to simplify the coding, make things a little more compact. Here's our three equations for f1, f for the internal nodes, and fn all set up as anonymous functions. So again, those are these same three equations here. Those are our function evaluations for newton rapson And then I'm setting this up. I need to evaluate those functions. I've set them up here as anonymous functions, but we need to evaluate them and return a column vector f. So to evaluate them, we'll evaluate the first function using t1, <clears throat> using the first two values, since the boundary condition is built in to the function definition. Then we'll do the internal nodes using tk minus 1, tk, and tk plus 1 in a for loop stepping from 2 to n minus 1. So that's the internal nodes. And finally, we've, we'll evaluate the last internal node using the n minus 1 and nth value of ti, again, since that boundary condition is built in to the anonymous function. So that's our function that I wrote to evaluate the system of equations at each iteration of newton raphson the next thing we had to do is define the Jacobian matrix, and that one was a little bit simpler. One thing you'll note is for our parameters, we need all the same parameters in the same order, since we're using the same, we have the same var arg n data structure to carry those parameters to these two functions. So even though in the Jacobian method we're not using t naught, tl, or t imp for our Jacobian matrix, we still need to have at least placeholders there to get get out to these three values for sig, h, and l. So we want to. That's one place that it's common to have problems in implementing this, since we're using different parameters potentially in these two functions. We'll set up our discrete matrix of our discrete set of x values again and now we only have the only place we have a function dependence is on the diagonal so I've defined an anonymous function df dt diag and that's just the negative 2 plus delta x squared h minus 4 times delta x squared times sigma times t cubed so again we're looking at that value for the diagonals, and then the rest of the matrix is zeros with ones on the off diagonals. So here we've set up the uh, diagonal in a column. Here we've set up the off diagonals as ones in a column, and again using the sparse diagonals MATLAB built in function to set this up. We'll use put the diagonals on the zero diagonal or the main diagonal in the n by n matrix. Again, n is defined by the length of our temperature vector. And put the off diagonals on the negative one, so the lower diagonal, and the positive one, so one up from the main diagonal, to set up that Jacobian matrix. So I'd encourage you to run this m file. Make sure you understand how it's working. Maybe step through it with a debugger to see how the function evaluation and the Jacobian matrix function are working and the end result is something like this and we see the finite difference solution pretty much on top of the shooting method 
and even with a relatively large delta x, so this is a delta x now of 0 0.5, And we call our shooting method was with ODE 45. So we have a second order accurate finite difference method with delta x equals 0 0.5, qualitatively giving us the same result as the shooting method with ODE 45. So they look almost the same. There's definitely some difference between the two. But for most engineering purposes, this would be close enough. And to get some idea of why we have some motivation to use the finite difference method instead of the shooting method, is we can look at the computation times for these two cases. For this second order finite difference method with newton raphson the computation time is 4.2 milliseconds. We can compare that to the shooting method using ODE 45, and it takes more than 10 times longer and recall the reason, there's two reasons for that. One, ODE45 is a higher order method, so it re requires a few more function evaluations as a result. But the main reason here, recall ODE45, we have to solve, to implement the shooting method, we have to solve an ODE45 solution for every F0 iteration in the roots problem. So just to get our final shooting method solution with ODE45 for a nonlinear system, we might have to integrate the differential equation 10, 15, 20 times with ODE45. So the shooting method is a little easier to implement, but it's a lot more computationally expensive. And so that's why it's worth also understanding the finite difference method. And you'll get a chance to practice with these in this week's programming assignment. And that concludes this video.